Well, hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you 15 signs you might have been born with an impaired skin barrier. These are skin findings, manifestations that we often see in people who have an underlying problem with their skin barrier as a result of maybe things that they inherited as far as issues with barrier proteins, lipids. Often these things can be identified in patients who have atopic dermatitis. The first one is something called white dermatographism. Now, dermatographism basically is skin writing. It is something that a lot of people experience where if you stroke the skin, you get a hive that appears in the shape of the marking that you made by stroking the skin. And usually that's red and raised. White dermatographism, on the other hand, is a little bit different in that first you get a red line from stroking the skin, and then within about 10 to 15 seconds, it turns completely white. And it can stay like that for you know 60 or more seconds. We see this in patients who have atopic dermatitis, also sometimes can be seen in patients who have allergic contact dermatitis. White dermatographism can appear with even just the slightest bit of stroking in terms of the pressure. It's more common in adults than children with atopic dermatitis and it also is a lot more common on the lower body in comparison to the upper body. Number two is hyperlinear palms. If you look at your palms of your hands, you see a lot of little tiny lines maybe on this part of the hand or even over your fingers. This is something that a lot of patients who have atopic dermatitis or ichthyosis vulgaris will often have hyperlinear palms and it is associated with an inherited defect in something called filaggrin. Also patients who have keratosis pilaris or food allergies may also have an increased association with hyperlinear palms. So take a moment, look at your palms. Number three is something that I think needs rebranding because it doesn't sound so nice. It's called atopic dirty neck. Basically, the neck is delicate skin. It's prone to irritation in anyone, but if you have atopic dermatitis, it's a common area to develop flares of your eczema, and the skin can become thickened and discolored. You get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, but then the skin can just get thick from the chronic rubbing of like scratching, and it can take on this dirty appearance. And Parents of children who develop this may think that the child has not been doing a good job bathing themselves and they may go in the you know, bathroom with them and say, let's scrub that neck. Um, and really that is the opposite of what you wanna do because it's not actually dirty. It is discolored and thickened and rubbing it aggressively only makes the problem worse. This can improve with good control of the atopic dermatitis, consistent use of moisturizers, barrier creams, emollients. Number four clue is you get itchy whenever you sweat. Sweat on the skin surface is an irritant, regardless of if you have a problem with your skin barrier. But for patients who have atopic dermatitis, Sweat can really be problematic. Patients often get very itchy. Their skin starts to tingle whenever they get sweaty. And this may be related to a direct effect of components in your sweat being irritating and aggravating to eczema. It may have to do with the fact that sweat leads the skin to lose more water and become more prone to dryness and irritation. But it also is thought that patients who have atopic dermatitis, their sweat glands may be a little leaky below the surface of the skin and sweat actually leaks out into the dermis and generates an inflammatory response to trigger eczema itch discomfort. If you do have problems with sweat on the skin surface as an atopic, Make sure that you take measures to keep the skin cool and dry when you are exercising and also try as best you're able to rinse the skin of sweat after you're done working out. The other thing about sweat with atopic dermatitis relates to that little yeast that lives on everyone's skin called malassezia. A lot of patients who have atopic dermatitis, they actually develop an allergy to certain parts of malassezia. And when you sweat, that malassezia comes through the sweat glands and you also have um, kind of almost an allergic response to that little yeast. This can also play a role in itch and flares of the eczema on the head and neck. Number five is prominent horizontal lines of your lower eyelid. This is called Denny Morgan's folds, and it's present from a very young age. Some patients with atopic dermatitis, you can even notice this 
around the time of birth. In contrast to periorbital wrinkles, wrinkles around the eyes that we get as a result of age, these appear from a very, very early age. And in contrast to wrinkles around the eyes, Denny Morgan folds aren't the result of loss of collagen in the supportive framework, but rather the result of inflammation in the skin, maybe also aggravated by rubbing of the eyes, leading to accumulation of fluid around that area, and you get this prominent little wrinkle under the eyes. Denny Morgan folds are not specific to atopic dermatitis. They can also be identified in patients who have other inflammatory conditions around the eyes. Speaking of eyes, another hallmark of atopic dermatitis, having an impaired skin barrier, goes along with this tendency to develop seasonal allergies, allergic rhinitis. And as a result, a lot of patients develop what's called allergic shiners, basically dark, dark under eye circles this has to do with the congestion of fluid in the little veins underneath the eyes, coupled with the fact that that area of, of the eye, that under eye skin is thin, it's delicate. So stuff underneath is more obvious. So it looks dark and discolored. You may have some overlying thickening of the skin from chronic rubbing, and you may also have hyperpigmentation as a result of the inflammation, further adding to that dark discoloration. Those who have seasonal allergies as part of their atopic dermatitis, seasonal allergies are really common. Uh, they often will have a prominent nasal crease. Basically from seasonal allergies, pushing the nose up, they get a little horizontal crease. You see this a lot in young kids who have atopic dermatitis, seasonal allergies. They're always sniffing, rubbing their nose. Yes, that is, that is not permanent. It can improve with time, but if you consistently do that, it may become more of a fixture. This is something that a lot of people notice on themselves and may not realize it's tied to atopic dermatitis. It's follicular prominence, perifollicular accentuation. Basically, skin colored to dark little tiny bumps overlying the hair follicle. And if you look to the side, you can really notice it. It'll be often more obvious on the upper back, the chest. It can improve in appearance with consistent use of moisturizers to help replenish moisture in the outermost layer of the skin and to help improve barrier function and limit penetration of irritants and water loss. Then you have a wool intolerance, W-O-O-L, wool intolerance. This is not an allergy. This extreme discomfort flares of eczema when you come in contact with wool. And it's thought to be a mechanical irritant effect of the wool fibers. Whether or not this aggravates your skin is also related to the wool fiber. For example, merino wool, which I guess is a more delicate fiber, doesn't typically bother patients who have atopic dermatitis and an impaired skin barrier. It's something about the, you know, the coarse wool fiber. Then a lot of patients with atopic dermatitis, not all, experience Queen Anne sign or Hertaus sign. Basically thinning of the outermost, uh, outermost third of your eyebrow starts to get thin. You can even have loss there. This is not specific to having an impaired skin barrier and atopic dermatitis. You also can see this in patients who have hypothyroidism. It's more obvious in patients who have a lot of facial atopic dermatitis going on, a lot of inflammation. And once it comes under good control, the brows can grow back. So it's probably the inflammation is leading to the brow loss in that area, the inflammation from the impaired barrier of atopic dermatitis and the flares of the eczema. Number 11 sign, chelitis. Chelitis is fancy medical term for chapped lips. A lot of patients with atopic dermatitis readily develop chapped lips with little cracks that can be very painful, uncomfortable, peeling of the lips. And this is something a lot of adults with atopic dermatitis experience. And it's something that you might just deal with this as an adult with atopic dermatitis. Like a course that can happen with atopic dermatitis is you have it as a child and then it burns out, it kind of goes away. And then as an adult, you have these little reminders. And one of them is um, chap lips, having a tendency towards chap lips. And this can be made worse by coming in contact with irritants. So for example, the flavorants in adult toothpaste 
mint, cinnamon can really aggravate the chapped lips. Certain lip balms can be very irritating or because you have an impaired skin barrier is part of your constitution, right? You were born this way. Even though the eczema has kind of burned out, it's still part of you. Stuff gets into the skin more readily, so you are more susceptible to developing allergic contact dermatitis, becoming allergic to something in a product that you have been using. And that can often be a lip balm because you've got chapped lips, you're using lip balms, and therefore you can go on to develop an allergic chelitis on top of just your plain Jane chelitis from being an atopic. So for this reason, I always point people in the direction of using plain petroleum jelly on the lips because it is free of possible allergens that can you know, be a problem, especially if you have an impaired skin barrier. All right, the next sign, see it a lot in young children, but adults certainly can develop it as well. It's called pityriasis alba. It's basically oval, round, hypopigmented, uh, patches kind of have a little fine scale to them. This is more obvious in people who have a deeper skin tone. It's basically because the atopic dermatitis, you're losing water, the skin is very sensitive, irritated, inflamed, and as a result, you kind of develop what's called post-inflammatory hypopigmentation. It often happens on the cheeks, but really anywhere where you have atopic dermatitis. And it's, like I said, it's a lot more common in people who have a deeper skin tone. Um, and it can easily be confused with vitiligo, or it can be confused with pityriasis um, versicolor, tinea versicolor, which is related to malassezia yeast. And it also can be confused with seborrheic dermatitis, another eczema. But it's not uncommon for patients to, with atopic dermatitis to develop these oval round patches where the skin color starts to fade a bit. The good news is once the eczema, the atopic dermatitis is treated, is managed, is controlled, you're moisturizing consistently to really help with the barrier function, well, your normal skin color can return. So there's that. And aside from these light colored patches, the next sign is just overall what's described as pallor, meaning paleness of the face, especially like around the nose. This may have to do with a combination of just the vascular sort of changes with all the inflammation um, or just a result of rubbing and maybe to a certain extent some post-inflammatory hypopigmentation. Number 14, it's not uncommon for people who have an impaired skin barrier to develop these non-specific hand and foot rashes, dermatitis, um, hand and foot eczemas. Now, of course, you can have on the hands a specific type of hand eczema called dyshydrosis, which I have a whole video about, okay? These little blisters that come up on the sides of the fingers and itch like none other. But aside from that, you can just have bouts of hand eczema, hand dermatitis, that's sort of nonspecific where you don't really have those little blisters and likewise on the bottom of the feet. But um, this is just kind of a nonspecific thing. And in kids, like teens and tweens, there's something called juvenile plantar dermatosis. Basically, they develop sometimes painful, flaky, scaly, and deeply fissured areas, mostly on the weight-bearing surfaces of the soles of the feet. And it can be made worse or brought out by friction, poorly fitted shoes, or a lot of sweating. It happens more so in teens and tweens who have really sweaty feet or if they're wearing shoes that aren't particularly breathable or they stay in like tight fitting shoes for a long, pr long period of time, they can develop this as well. Um, and it can be quite painful. All right, so the last sign that you may not have ever thought about, um, it's another one of those little you know, reminders of the eczema that you had as a kid because it tends to happen you know, in adults. It's a nipple eczema. Eczema around the, the nipples can be a very painful and why patients develop this is not clear. It's probably, again, related to just this inherent issue that those patients have with their skin barrier. And the clothing that you wear may be causing a lot of friction in this area, irritating the skin. And it can be lead to cracking, scaling, itch. Now, women who are breastfeeding develop, can develop something quite similar, a nipple eczema, but in patients with atopic dermatitis outs, you know, who aren't breastfeeding can develop this too. 
Again, um, what I recommend here, you know, see your dermatologist. There are treatments that can be offered here, but you need to protect that skin with a good barrier cream, petroleum jelly, or even diaper rash cream here can really make a difference. All right, guys, those are 15 signs you were born with an impaired skin barrier. I really hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.